Dear students, I welcome you for the session 3 of Analog Electronics on Module 4, Feedback and Oscillator Circuits. Myself, Nataraj Vijapur, I will be continuing with this session 2, session 3. Uh, in the previous session, uh, we had uh, started with feedback concepts. In the session 1, we covered feedback concepts. We discussed about general feedback structure. We discussed how feedback alters the properties of open loop amplifier. Okay. We discussed about feedback plays feedback being playing a very major role in the with respect to stability of amplifier, input output or impedances of amplifiers. These all we discussed in session 1. In session 2, we discussed the variety of ways in which feedback occurs. Okay. So, we discussed about feedback network, the how the voltage is being fed back, current being fed back, whether it is being fed back in series or shunt depending on that. There were four connection types we discussed in this feedback connection times. Then session 2, we discussed about practical feedback circuits. We, we had discussed an example of voltage series feedback amplifier by making use of an op amp as well as IFET circuit. Okay. We had started actually with emitter follower as an example of voltage series feedback. So, we will continue with that. So, today's session we are looking at practical feedback circuits of voltage series feedback configuration, current series feedback configuration, voltage shunt feedback configuration and current shunt feedback configuration. Okay. So, we will be looking at practical circuit for each of this. In the previous sessions, we just looked about the topologies, how the input and output impedance varies, how the different properties vary, we discussed. So, this session we are discussing practical circuits. So, at the end of this session, you will be in a position to analyze any feedback amplifier circuit and you can design the feedback amplifier. You should be able to design a feedback amplifier depending on the requirements after attending this session. Okay. So, these are the outcomes. Again, uh, for this content, we have I have referred following textbooks, Robert Boylstead and Louis Nashelsky, Electronic Devices and Circuit Theory, Pearson Publications, 10th edition. So, this is a very, very important book from university point of view, syllabi point of view, analog electronics point of view. Then Adel Sedra and Smith, Microelectronic Circuit Theory and Applications. So, this textbook particularly explains feedback concepts very, very well. Then next, we I have also taken Milman and Halkia's Integrated Electronics, Bakshi and Godsai Analog Electronics. So, these all four subjects are important. Okay. So, these I have utilized to prepare my content. Okay. So, in the previous session, we discussed about voltage series feedback configuration. Okay. We had also discussed about two circuits. One is which makes use of FET and another one which makes use of op amp. So, today I will be discussing about one more example, practical example for voltage series feedback, which is emitter follower. Okay. Uh, let us recall, recall the circuitry, recall the circuitry of voltage series feedback. So, what all it consists of? A voltage V s, an open loop amplifier, a feedback network. Okay. So, the input voltage being amplified by the open loop amplifier, output voltage is obtained. This is fed to the feedback network. Feedback network samples you can say or collect a part of output voltage. It is actually an attenuator. So, it just collects a part of output voltage and that is mixed in a series with the input voltage to generate a voltage V i. 
Okay. So, this is the configuration, I think all of you are noting down this, uh, we are just recalling the concept of voltage series feedback. Now, this actually is being related here to the emitter follower circuitry. We have seen this emitter follower, in fact you have used it in the earlier sessions, you have studied this, you have worked on it on the emitter follower. Okay. So, emitter follower is one of the three configurations. We know that BJT or a transistor amplifier can be biased in common base configuration, common emitter configuration and common collector configuration. In common base configuration, base is made common between emitter and collector, emitter acts as an input and collector acts as an output. In common emitter configuration, what is being done? Emitter is made common, signal is applied to the base and output is taken from a collector. Both the configurations common emitter and common base, the output is taken from a collector junction. Collector is a reverse biased junction, you will observe a high output voltage or a voltage gain is high. Now, coming to common collector configuration. Okay. So, this is an example of common collector configuration you have an input voltage V s being applied between base. Okay. So, here what you can observe is the common collector configuration, collector is made common with respect to V c c, supply is being, collector is being connected to V c c, the output is taken from emitter terminal. The moment output is taken from emitter terminal, it is common emitter configuration. We know that base to emitter junction is forward biased for transistor operation. Okay. So, when you forward bias it and you take an output, this, uh, this will have a, this junction will have a less resistance. Obviously, voltage gain will be less, less than the one maximum possible is one. So, output waveform resembles input waveform. So, it is also called as emitter follower circuitry. Okay. So, you have base to emitter junction forward biased by a resistance R B, collector to base junction is reverse biased by supply and the R C. Okay. So, V S is the source, it generates an input voltage V I between base and emitter terminals, output is taken across the resistance R E here. So, that is R E, the output voltage. The important point what we can note here is, this R E acts as a feedback register. Okay. It is common to input loop as well as it is common to output loop. So, it is a feedback element here. Okay. And previously, we discussed in a stability analysis also, like in the earlier chapters, R E provides the stability. Okay. So, when R E, there we have seen that R E protects it protects Q point against variations in temperature. Okay. So, now here it is playing a major role, that we are, the role of it providing stability against temperature here is analyzed from feedback point of view. Okay. So, this is the circuitry. So, how the circuitry works here, how actually you can have a feedback which ensures stability. You can observe here that uh, so, when the input voltage is applied to it, the input AC signal is applied to the transistor, it amplifies the AC signal, output is obtained, the output voltage appears as V f here across R e. If due to variations in the load or because of temperature, because of some parameters, external parameters, if collector current increases, then the emitter current increases. So, feedback voltage V f also increases. If feedback voltage V f increases, this is at the emitter terminal V e. So, what will happen to V e? So, its voltage will increase, V e will increase or V b e will come down or F v, v b e is in the sense instantaneous V b e is nothing but input voltage for the transistor. So, input voltage is reduced, which in turn reduces input current and obviously, collector current will be reduced or output will be brought back to its original value. That is how R e plays an very, very important role in the stability of an amplifier. 
Okay. So, uh, we have we have to analyze this circuitry, we have to analyze this voltage series feedback emitter follower circuitry. So, first thing you have to determine here gain, gain of the amplifier of the transistor. Okay. So, gain A I can express here. Now, the feedback is part of the circuitry only here. So, open loop gain can be put as output voltage which is V naught divided by V s the input voltage. Output voltage how can you express? Output voltage can be expressed as output current into output resistance. Now, here output current. So, which current is flowing here i e we are collecting output across emitter we are connecting output across emitter. So, the I e current will be flowing here. We know that I e and I c are nearly same. By h parameter model, I can call I c as h f e into I b, which in turn is equal to I e. So, it is I e R e, which is h f e I b R e divided by V s, which is the input voltage. That is further equal to H F E into R E, further I B can be put as V S divided by H I E. Okay. So, now you can think why this V S divided by H I E is coming. Okay. So, if we look at H parameter model, the H parameter of this common emitter configuration. Okay. If we draw the H parameter of this C E configuration, I can put I can replace the transistor. So, how to draw the AC equivalent circuit? To draw the AC equivalent circuit, initially DC voltages are set to 0, only AC voltages are being taken into considerations. So, in that case, RB will be connected to ground. H i e. So, this is the current I b which will be flowing into the transistor. Then we have R e H f e I b right. Then we have R c being grounded and you are taking output voltage across the emitter. Right? So, now this I b can be put as this is the supply voltage V s. So, I can put V s I b as V s divided by H i e. So, I can substitute V s divided by H i e. If there is no feedback, okay? if there is no feedback being taken into consideration, then the circuitry will be without this R e. Okay. This will be your transistor, which is an open loop amplifier. Okay. So, now what we have discussed is how the I b has come, how this base current I b you have substituted. So, you can substitute it as V s divided by H i e. Further, after simplification V s gets cancelled. So, it will be H f e into R e divided by H i e. Okay. So, you have the open loop gain. Further feedback network beta, how you can get the feedback network beta? Beta is V f divided by V naught. So, feedback here you can observe from the diagram. So, you have an uh, output voltage being obtained here, beta is equals to V f divided by V naught, which is equal to 1. So, I can express the closed loop gain or gain with feedback A f as A f equal to V naught by V s, which is equal to we know that we have already determined that for the feedback configuration closed loop gain will be A divided by 1 plus A into beta. So, substitute and you will get the expression for closed loop gain A f. Okay. So, which is H f e R e divided the whole divided by H i e plus H f e R e. Okay. So, this is how we analyze voltage series feedback emitter follower, but what is the point to be carried here? Point to be carried here is R e. This R e provides 
stability. Okay. It provides, it improves the input impedance, okay. it also serves to control the gain. Okay. Then next, uh, so in effect we discussed about three circuits now, voltage series feedback with FET, voltage series feedback with op amp and now voltage series feedback with emitter follower. We will proceed further to current series feedback, the next topology. Okay. So, here we are going to discuss how the current feedback will help you. Okay. So, now here recall this session, recall the previous session we discussed about current series feedback topology. It consists of an amplifier A, a feedback network beta, a input voltage source V s, okay. then you have a load impedance R L. Okay. So, now the we have to analyze here. So, what is being done here? You have an amplifier of which type? So, this amplifier is called as transconductance amplifier, because it accepts input voltage and generates an output current in a proportion to the input voltage V i. So, this being open loop gain of this amplifier is put as I naught divided by V i. So, this is the input voltage V s. The load current generated is fed back in series to the feedback network here. Okay. So, you are part, you are sensing the feedback current via feedback network. So, this feedback network generates the output voltage depending on the input current it receives. So, I naught is the input current for this feedback network and it generates an output voltage V f which is equal to beta into I naught. This is mixed in series with the input voltage V s. So, it generates an voltage V i. Okay. So, this is about current series feedback topology. So, we have discussed this. Let us continue further. Let us look at one practical circuitry, which makes use of this current series feedback. Okay. So, this is a well known example. All of, all of us, we have used it in the previous uh, sessions. This is the most popular configuration of BJT. It is common emitter configuration. Okay. So, here transistor is connected in a common emitter configuration. So, what all it consists of? It consists of sinusoidal AC source V s, which is the signal to be amplified, a coupling capacitor C 1, which blocks D C and allows only A C. Now, it is a which mode of a transistor? It is C E configuration, where emitter is made common between base and collector. Okay. So, the input voltage appears between base and emitter here. Okay. Supply V C C along with R B forward biases the base to emitter junction, V C C along with R C forward reverse biases the collector to base junction. Right. So, you have again uh, important element a register R E, which provides stability, which provides protection against temperature or Q point what we have analyzed previously. Now, in the voltage series feedback, we discussed about emitter follower circuitry, because the voltage was taken across the emitter. Now, the voltage is taken across the collector. So, it is a common emitter configuration, base is input and collector is output. Okay. So, you can observe the diagram, you can take down this diagram. Okay. So, supplies V s input coupling capacitor R B, R E and R C V C C. So, you can copy this diagram. So, what is important is output is taken across the collector. Now, can you visualize how the feedback happens here? Okay. So, the feedback happens here via resistance R E. So, this R E 
is common to the input loop as well as R e is common to the output loop. So, R e is present in both input loop and output loop. So, it is a common element which helps you to achieve the stability. Okay. You have input voltage V i which is generated because of the input voltage. Now, the output voltage here the voltage drop which appears across R e acts as a feedback voltage here it acts as a feedback voltage of V f. So, how the again the circuitry works uh, very very simple here. So, if at all due to some parameter some variation if output current increases. So, this is a output current right which is flowing I c here and it is I e here. So, if this current increases voltage V f increases. If voltage V f increases the effective input voltage which is V b e, V b minus V e it decreases which decreases I b input current. If I b decreases I c will correspondingly decrease. So, here I am talking about instantaneous currents. Okay. So, this is how the feedback happens and the Q point may be maintained or the stability may be also maintained if it is an operation with the uh, AC signal. Okay. So, this feedback ensures okay, the removal of noise, removal of distortions okay, improves the linearity in the operation also. Okay, fine. So, the same aspect is being explained here it is an uh, this transistor amplifier you have used in many circuits. C e configuration you will find in all of the circuits. The moment R e comes it is nothing but the feedback and you are taking output across collector. Okay. Fine. So, uh, this is an example of current series feedback. Let us go further. Let us analyze the different elements of current series feedback. Let us analyze how the open loop gain is determined, how the feedback network gain is determined. Okay. So, now here we have drawn the AC equivalent circuit of an amplifier without feedback. So, the same circuitry which we have drawn previously okay, is applicable here. So, input junction of a transistor base to emitter junction is represented by Im impedance is represented by H i e, R b is a biasing register. Then collector current flows between collector to emitter which is I c. Here you have R c also and you are taking output across R c that is very very important here. You are taking output across R c. Now, how do you determine now the gain? Okay, from feedback point of view gain which is A here can be expressed as parameter of interest here is output current, whereas voltage is applied here is at the input. So, gain A is equals to output current divided by input voltage. So, it can be calculated as minus H F E divided by H I E plus R E. So, how I naught? I naught is nothing but H F E into I B. So, you can observe that I naught is taken as positive if it is flowing into the load. Now, here the collector current is direction of collector current is it is such that it is flowing outside the load. So, you have a minus sign here. So, it is minus H F E I B divided by what are there at the input? At the input you have H i e which represents input impedance as well as we have R e right. So, we have R e also there at the input. So, we have R e here. So, H i e plus R e into I b will be the input voltage I b cancels on the both the sides. So, you will get the open loop gain. Then the feedback network beta. So, you can calculate feedback network beta as V f divided by I naught. So, why? Because this you can recall the concept what is beta? 
gain here is beta is equals to V f divided by I naught feedback voltage divided by output current. So, what is the feedback voltage here across R e? We are taking output feedback voltage is generated across R e. So, it will be R e naught into R e the direction of I naught is negative to the emitter current. So, it is called as minus I naught. It is in fact I e R e, I e is minus of I naught. So, it is minus I naught R e divided by R naught equal to minus R e. So, this is the gain of feedback network. Now, the input impedance. Now, now this is the input impedance here. So, you have calculated A, which is gain of the open loop amplifier. We have calculated beta, which is gain of the feedback network. Let us look at input and output impedances of transistor amplifier. Okay. So, now what is there? Where is the input impedance is seen? Input impedance is the input impedance as seen from the input side. So, what you can see from the input side leaving the source, you can see R b and H i e being connected in parallel. I have also the feedback resistance R e being connected at the input. So, considering this R e effective input impedance becomes z i e is equals to R b in parallel with H i e plus R e. So, you have R e also there at the input with feedback. Okay. Whereas, what is output impedance? Output impedance is the impedance as seen from the load side, okay. from the load side excluding load. So, I can see only R c there. So, z naught will be equal to R c ohms. Okay. So, this is how you can calculate input impedance is seen from the input side and output impedance is taken from output side. So, now uh, we, we, we are subjecting it to feedback. Okay, we are subjecting it to feedback. So, we have already determined okay, the input impedance with feedback, output impedance also with feedback of current series configuration. So, what is the input impedance with feedback? Z i f is equals to Z i into bracket 1 plus A into beta. So, we have determined this, A f we have determined already. Z i f is, okay, A f is what? A f we have already seen the formula for closed loop gain. It is A divided by 1 plus A into beta. You have already determined A. You have already determined beta. So, substitute both A and beta and you will get A f. So, this is an expression for A f. So, you will get A f as A f as equals to A divided by 1 plus A into beta. Substitute A, substitute beta. So, it will be minus H f E divided by H i plus H f E R e. Okay. That is closed loop gain. Further, we have input impedance with feedback. So, when it comes to feedback, I have to consider R e also. Effect of R e so, that is Z i f. How can I can express Z i f? Z i f can be expressed as Z i into bracket 1 plus A into beta. So, 1 plus A into beta is nothing but the feedback factor. So, after simplification, it can be arrived as H i e plus H f e R e. Okay. So, these expressions are very, very important. And we have also determined output impedance with feedback Z o f. Z o f here for a current series configuration, it is Z naught into bracket 1 plus A into beta. Okay. So, these are very, very important. These are very, very important parameters. So, you have determined closed loop again, input impedance with feedback, output impedance with feedback. Even you can calculate 
voltage gain A V F. Okay. So, voltage gain A V F is nothing but closed loop gain. So, considering the only the voltage gain, we are calculating the only the voltage gain here. So, which is V naught divided by V S. You can calculate this as closed loop gain E F into okay, R C. Okay. So, this is how you can calculate. Okay. So, now uh, just come back to the slide. Okay. So, we have closed loop gain E V F equal to V naught by V S. You can how you can calculate V naught? V naught is output voltage. So, the output voltage is output current into output resistance. So, which is I naught into R C divided by V S. So, I naught by V S we have already calculated. It is nothing but closed loop gain E F. So, substitute here into R C. Okay. So, this is a parameter. So, what all we calculated in current series feedback? We calculated A we have calculated beta, we have calculated A f, we have calculated Z i f, Z o f and A v f. Fine. So, you can solve one small problem, you can note down this problem, you can solve it, you can substitute the elements. Okay. So, supply V C C a 470 ohm resistance, a feedback. So, this is a base resistance, you have collector resistance, emitter, Sub input voltage is given as 10 milli volts, H F E and H I E are given to you. So, uh, on the board, okay, I have given the expressions. Okay, you have to just substitute in this expressions and you will get the uh, element voltage gain. You can calculate as A F into R C. Fine. So, this is how you can calculate this current series feedback configuration. Okay. So, we have discussed now the voltage series feedback one example we have discussed. Then we have discussed current series feedback one example we have discussed. Okay. Now, we will proceed further voltage shunt feedback using op-amp. Okay. Recall this diagram, take down this diagram. Okay. So, it is a voltage shunt feedback configuration what all elements involved here? You have an open loop amplifier, you have a feedback network, an output and an source signal. Okay. So, you have output resistance R L and a source signal. Now, here for voltage shunt feedback, when we are mixing the voltage in parallel, we are substituting voltage source by the current source. So, you have a current source I S here. Okay. So, difference between this input current and the feedback current will give you the current I i, which is given as an input to the amplifier. So, you will get A equals to V naught divided by I i. So, which is observed at the output. So, this output voltage is fed back to the feedback network. Feedback network collects or it generates a feedback current, which is in proportion the output voltage. This is mixed in parallel. So, what is I i here? I i is difference of I s and I f. I i is equals to I s minus I f. So, how the feedback is brought in here or the how the stability is ensured? If output voltages increases or decreases from its nominal set value, the feedback current will also increase. If feedback current increases, which is drawn from the supply, then the input current decreases. If input current decreases, again the output voltage will decrease. So, this is how you have a feedback here. You, this is how feedback happens here in case of voltage shunt feedback using op-amp. Okay. What is an example here? Now, what is an example? The most uh, important example, which you will be coming across all the electronic circuits is voltage shunt feedback. Okay. So, this voltage shunt feedback topology, uh, which is op amp is used everywhere okay, in all electronic circuits. Uh, you will be later in the next semesters, you will be coming across this op amps. So, this is used everywhere. So, what is being followed is voltage shunt feedback here. 
Okay, so you can note down this diagram. So this is a op amp being connected in a inverting amplifier configuration. So this is the input voltage V i. You have a resistance R one. You have a resistance R naught. R naught is a feedback resistor here, which is connected between output and the input. So it is it acts as a feedback resistor. It is connected between the output and the inverting terminal. Okay, then the non-inverting terminal is grounded here. This input voltage V one is replaced by the current source. Uh, it is now the equivalent circuitry for our analysis of uh, voltage and feedback. We are replacing input voltage source by its equivalent current source. So this current source will generate a current of magnitude V one by R one, same magnitude. Okay. Then you have current I I, which is the input current entering the op amp. So this is the op amp configuration. You know, non-inverting terminal is grounded. Output is applied to the input via feedback resistance R naught, and you have an output voltage V naught here. Fine. So now uh, let us see. How the elements are controlled here? Very simple here. So output voltage is fed in parallel with the input voltage. So if at all output voltage increases, then the feedback current drawn will also increase. So the input current decreases. That is how the stability is brought into. Now let us look at the parameters. Parameters of the voltage and feedback. Open loop gain A is equal to. Now it is an op amp. We know that open loop gain of an amplifier is infinity. Op amp, open loop gain is infinity. Feedback network. It is I F divided by V naught will be minus one by R naught. A F closed loop gain. Now here in case of the in case of uh, op amp. The product we know that E F is equals to E divided by one plus E into beta. The product E into beta is much much greater than one. So this E F will be can be approximated as one by beta because this can be further substituted as E divided by E into beta. A cancels, so E F can be put as one by beta. So one by beta is nothing but uh, we have already calculated the beta, so it will be equal to minus R naught. Substitute you can get voltage gain also. Okay, so voltage gain with feedback A V F is minus R naught by R one. Okay, so this is used or this is designed uh, simple design. You can achieve. Required voltage gain by adjusting the feedback resistor and the input resistance. You can achieve any gain, so it is minus R naught by R one. See, you can see if you adjust these resistances, if you adjust this R naught as well as R one, you can achieve a any kind of desired gain. You can achieve that. Okay, now the. Whatever example F E T we have discussed, we have discussed about voltage and feedback using op amp. We have discussed now the same concept we can carry over to the F E T is also. So this example is voltage and feedback using field effect transistors. So what the circuit arrangement consists of? Circuit arrangement consists of An input voltage source V S, resistance R S, okay, which is the resistance of the source. R F is very very important here. R F is a feedback resistor which is connected between the input and output here. So you have supply source V C C, a drain resistance R D. You can observe that we are not given any 
value to this resistance. This simply because uh, this gets bypassed via capacitor, because capacitance acts as a short circuit for the AC signals. So, during amplification signal AC signal will prefer the path of the capacitance, because that being the low impedance. So, it will get short circuited or this resistance is ignored in the calculations of feedback. Okay. Now, I, uh, according to what we have discussed in the topology, input voltage source is first represented as a current source. So, it is represented by I s in parallel with R s. The feedback resistance R f is present between output and the input. So, it is present between these two elements. So, you can see that what is the input current I i here, which is a difference of I s and I f. So, feedback current flows through R f. For AC analysis, this is nothing but the AC equivalent circuitry. When it comes to AC analysis, all the DC conditions are set to 0. So, here DC source is being set to 0. Okay. So, D C source is being set to 0, then you have a output resistance R D. Okay. So, this is the A C equivalent circuit. We have already seen the in the starting units, uh, first uh, units we have seen first uh, sessions, initial sessions, early sessions, F E T we have analyzed. Okay. You all have analyzed in the earlier modules. Okay. We will just continue that. Okay. With out feedback, what is the gain? Gain is V naught divided by I i. So, this is F e t. F e t in I i is the input current, output voltage is V naught. So, we have already calculated this. It can be approximated as G m into R d into R s. And with feedback, the gain can be expressed as minus 1 by R naught, I f divided by V naught. Okay. What is the job of feedback network here? recall feedback network. So, it generates output current in proportion to the input voltage. Input voltage for this is output voltage. right? So, we can just substitute that here I f by V naught. V naught can be put as minus I f R f, because it is a feedback voltage across the resistance R f. So, I f cancels minus 1 by R f. Substitute you will have a A f the closed gain expression, which is V naught by I s, which is equal to A divided by 1 plus A into beta. So, you can simplify, you can obtain the expression for closed loop gain A f. Okay. You can further evaluate closed loop gain with voltage as a parameter. So, A V f is V naught by V s, V naught by V s can be rearranged as V naught by I s into I s by V s. So, further substitute you will get the expression for closed loop voltage gain A V f. So, voltage gain is very, very important in voltage amplifiers. So, this is a parameter of interest in voltage series feedback also as well as in current series feedback, voltage shunt feedback also. Okay. So, we have calculated A f, we have this is a F E T circuit. So, we started with this A F E T circuit, we replaced it is small signal equivalent circuitry. Okay. Then, we have calculated the parameters A, beta, A f and A V f. Right. So, now calculate one small problem. Okay. So, for th which relates to this, you can note down this problem, you can solve this. Calculate the voltage gain with and without feedback. Okay. For the circuit with the values transconductance G m equals to 5 milliseconds, R d equals to 5.1 kilo ohms, R s equals to 1 kilo ohms and feedback resistance R f is equals to 20 kilo ohms. So, use these elements. So, very simple, the we have already derived. So, you calculate first from this circuitry, this is the given circuitry. Cal from this given circuitry, you have to first draw the small signal equivalent or A C equivalent circuitry. After drawing this A C equivalent circuitry, 
you have to calculate a beta a f and a v f. Okay. So, then you can solve this problem. Okay. So, now we have one more topology, the last topology, the current shunt feedback topology.